Hi friends, and welcome back to Playing Tribute to the Ace Attorney series, where I am able to continue on to Ace Attorney 5, Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. The uh, release for the 3DS um, that is that came well after uh, the Apollo Justice game, um, but is part of its own trilogy, like I was, uh, I think I mentioned, um, whenever I was playing Apollo Justice. So the story continues, and uh, and we're just going to get into it, because we've waited a while. I did not think I was going to be able to record this, but look at, look at this, here we are, and I'm very excited. Um, get ready, because there's a lot of uh, different stuff that they do in this game, and one of those things is... Uh, animated cutscenes. So sit back and relax because for a little while you won't have to listen to my voice try to, you know, make different voices with these characters. They actually have voice actors. So let's do it. These are dark times, where the law has been reduced to rubble, and it's up to us to restore it to its former glory. Yeah, I know what you mean. It looks like your target finally decided to make a move. Don't you worry, I've got a trusty new partner on board. us for half a year, though I can hardly believe it. Anyway, her power will be our greatest weapon. <laughs> Are you alright, miss? It's very anime. Yeah, it's for this very reason I returned. Time to bring it to an end. Oh, I love the music. He's back, you guys. And rightly so. We've got a lot going on, guys. Uh, this is going to be good. <laughs> Turnabout Countdown, Episode 1. Uh, our, of course, our tutorial case. <laughs> the best thing about bombs is how they erase and destroy without discretion. Now 
all I have to do is pin everything on that little girl. So true to form, we know who the criminal is in our first case. But um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start out with our new uh, our new defense attorney. She's going to introduce herself, so I won't do it. But uh, every game has a gimmick and or a new gimmick, and this game is no exception. She is the source of the new gimmick, and I'll let her introduce that when it comes as well. We're just I'm just gonna let things roll. Let's let's do it. And now I have to be voices. Hmm. Nope. Not feeling nervous at all. It's amazing what a girl can get used to. Even a tense atmosphere like this is no biggie. You doing okay, Athena? Oh, Apollo! Y yeah doing great. Like, I'm a little tune great. Oh yeah? Well, that's good to hear. Although... I could have sworn I heard your voice crack for a second there. I'm not transparent, huh? Cracking? No, no, my voice isn't cracking. Nerves of steel here, I tell ya. This is Apollo Justice. We know him. He's a fellow lawyer at the office I work for. Apollo is the lead for the defense on this case. But I'm going to be there at the bench with him too. Doing what I can to help out. I'll do whatever it takes to defend Jeannie. Speaking of steel, how are you holding up? That explosion really did a number on you. I'm just happy that you're okay, Athena. Although, I can't pretend I have no connection to this case. That's why I'm going to see to it that Juniper's name is cleared. And I'm sure you'll feel much as you feel much the same way. You got that right. I won't rest until Junie is completely cleared of all suspicion. Apollo, Athena. Thank you for doing this for me. Junie! Hey, are you okay? Sorry about that. I always seem to go into coughing fits whenever I get nervous. This kind of thing never happens at home in the forest, though. This is Juniper Woods. She's my dear, dear childhood friend, and she's also our client for this case. The news keeps repeating that Junie is the alleged bomber, but that's ridiculous. There's no way Junie would do anything like that. I brought you a little snack, Athena. Just a little something from my garden. Hey, thanks! So, um, is this an orange or a tangerine? It's an orange, my grandma says that orange is the color of strength and endurance. Oh, I get it. Strength of the trial, right? Junie, you're always so good to me. Jeez, look at me. Standing here clutching an orange to my chest with tears in my eyes. She wears her emotions on her sleeve. Which goes along with her gimmick. So, it works. Well, don't you worry. We'll be so powerful in there, they won't know what hit them. Right, Apollo? Yeah, that's right. Come what may, this is one trial. We just can't lose. A Apollo! Apollo! Uh. Blood is seeping through his bandages. One of his wounds must have reopened. All this time he was trying to put on a brave face, but he was really overdoing it. Mr. Justice! Huh? The trial is about to start, sir. Please proceed to the courtroom. What? Now? But Apollo's in no state to defend. I have to defend Jennifer. What are we going to do? The trial's about to start, with or without us. There's only one other option I can think of at a time like this. But even if I called him now, he'd never get here in time. No, wait! There's something else I can do! 
Polo, give me all the evidence for the case. Huh? What are you going to do? Bailiff? Yes, miss. The defense would like to submit a sub substitution of attorney petition. Athena! You're not seriously. You just concentrate on getting better. I'll defend Junie. All by yourself? Athena, stop for a second. Think about what you're saying. You've never once taken a case on alone before, right? You know, hey, problema. I can h handle it. I think. She speaks a lot of different languages because... Oh, that's an exclamation point. Oh my gosh, I'm so dumb. No, hey, problema. <sighs> Again, different languages. She's, she traveled abroad to, you know, become an attorney because of how... You know how the world works with, like, the people traveling to Europe to become an attorney earlier. Athena is actually very young. I believe she is 18 years old. Um, so she's traveled the world and she's traveled to Europe. And so she just speaks a bunch of languages just off the cusp like that. this. So. But I guess it really is up to you, Junie. Would you be okay with me taking over? Um, sure. I believe in you, Athena. And that's enough for me. You're worried for me, aren't you? To be honest, I'm pretty nervous, too. I think my heart might just burst out of my chest. But you're in no shape to stand at the bench now. So you'll have to leave it to me. He's still sweating. Yeah, he is definitely in no shape. Alright. I can see your mind's made up anyway. I hate that I can't be there, but I know you'll give it your utmost to defend Juniper. You bet I will! Rest assured of that! My name is Athena Sykes. I'm still just a newbie, but I'm a lawyer. This is only the second time I've taken the lead in a defense case. It'll be the first time I stand up there alone, though. But I have to do this. And I'm definitely not about to let anything bad happen to Junie. So, true to form, it's the second case, but... Uh, or her second case, but uh, apparently her first case is going to have a little bit more story to it than is necessary in the tutorial, because uh, that's just how it goes. Oh, it's so fancy now. All rise for the honorable judge. That never has a name. Court is now in session for the trial of Juniper Woods. The, the, the defense is ready, your honor. The prosecution is also ready, your honor. Uh-huh. And what is the meaning of this? I was under the impression that Mr. Red Monkey would be my opponent today. Yes, well, the substitution of turtle petition was submitted just a few moments ago. Due to the explosion in the courthouse yesterday, Mr. Justice is unable to continue. I see, I see. Not at all surprised to use that as an excuse to run away. How dare you? Oh my god, he is injured. You are a jerk. With me as an adversary, who wouldn't want to feign illness in order- Okay, you're a jerk. <laughs> in order to escape. What? The nerve of that guy. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. Well, I, I would if I wasn't so nervous. Ugh, this arrogant jerk. You arrogant jerk. No, widget! Is my hearing getting worse? I could have sworn I heard the defense say something just now. N no, you didn't hear anything at all, especially not from me. Uh, widget, by the way, is her necklace. It's the little machine that we heard in the opening cutscene. Um, you can see it. Uh, she's about to explain what it does. Mm, how odd. I could have sworn. I also heard something. Uh, that would be my indispensable partner, Widget. He sometimes words out what I'm thinking. <laughs> well, then. If that's the case, then it's a clear contradiction to what you just stated. A contradiction? You just stated that you said nothing. However, if that device of yours says what you're thinking, then you indeed said I was, uh, what was it? Elegance at work? 
Uh, actually, it was Arrogant Jerk. At any rate, what does it matter if it was a red monkey or a yellow monkey facing me? No fresh out of law school rookie can defeat defend this witness. <laughs> Mr. Payne, I believe that's enough. Let's get back to the case. Of course, Your Honor. I'm more than ready to show this little girl why they call me the Rookie Humiliator. It's not the Rookie Killer? Payne? Which, by the way, nice hair. <laughs> Looks very di and with the glasses. Wait, you know what? He might be a different Payne. We'll have to see whenever it lets me look into, like, the court record and stuff. He might be a different pain. I knew it. He really is an arrogant jerk. Arrogant jerk. Besides, if you continue to insult the prosecution, I will remove you from this court. What about him? He was insulting me. <laughs> ah, I'm very sorry. It was just a knee-jerk reaction. And now then, Mr. Payton, your opening statement, if you please. Thank you, Your Honor. Boy. Now then. The incident occurred yesterday here at this very courthouse in courtroom number four. At that time, the trial for a certain bombing was being held in courtroom number four. Ah, uh, yes, I was presiding over that trial as well. And Mr. Justice was there, the lawyer for the defense. A bomb that was being presented as evidence suddenly went off during the trial. It was a terrible incident, and courtroom number four was completely destroyed. Fortunately, we were able to start evacuation procedures before the explosion occurred. Just a few seconds more, and it would have turned into a horrific loss of human life. But there was, in fact, one death, was there not? That is correct, Your Honor. When courtroom number four was examined after the blast, the body of Detective Candace Arm was discovered. Candace Arm? Candace Arm? Okay. She was to take the stand as a, wit as a witness later in the trial. I wonder if we're gonna see this trial. If Apollo was the defense, like, what, like I would probably play out this trial, and it probably would be like finish the other half of it because it was interrupted by the explosion. I suppose she wasn't able to evacuate in time. What a terrible tragedy! I must admit, I stumbled at least ten times myself before I was able to escape. Maybe the court should see to getting you even shorter robes. The victim's body was found near the entrance to the courtroom. I suspect she stayed until the very end to help guide the others out to safety. Or out safely, sorry. Your Honor, allow me to submit as evidence the victim's autopsy report. And details about the bomb. Wow. Uh, Apollo, did you not give me anything? Ooh, boy. Uh, cause of death, trauma to back of the head caused by impact with a flat object. Time of death between 8 and 11 a.m. The time bomb that destroyed the courtroom was hidden inside a stuffed animal when it was detonated. Little devilish elephant going on there. I don't... Uh... Okay, I know how this works. All evidence for the trial is filed in the court record. When I want to check something out, I just touch the court record button. I also can check previous statements of the sentence. And save my game. I think this is a save. Yeah. Hey, there's Apollo. There's Junie. Ah, yes. It is a different pain. Unpleasantness. <laughs> he exudes unpleasantness. Yeah, I think the other one, uh, his name was Winston Bane, was it not? And there's Candace Arm. The detective was heading up the investigation into the bombing incident. Okay. I better take a peek later. Okay, I just did. It's fine. And now then, please call the accused to the witness stand. Are you feeling all right? You're looking a bit pale. I'm so sorry. I was feeling a bit weak when I first arrived here at the courthouse. But I, I'm 
all right. Judy's really giving it her all. I had better make sure I can do the same. <laughs> if we could please proceed. Your name and occupation, defendant. Juniper Woods. I'm a high school student. Miss Woods, can you confirm you were in the courthouse the day in question? Yes, I came to know Apollo Justice through my friend Thena. And so, I was there yesterday. To watch his trial and lend my support. Something's wrong. Junie's really scared. <laughs> and did you know I'm also known as the Defendant Humiliator? It looks like I have yet another chance to show everyone how I earned that moniker. Nah. Does his arrogance know no bounds? I have to protect Junie no matter what. Hey, you arrogant uh, Prosecutor Payne! Hmm, what is it? Do you want me to demonstrate why I'm known as the Rookie Humiliator instead? Take breath, Athena. Don't let him get to you. Prosecutor Payne! Junie is telling the truth. Mr. Justice also backed up her claim when we saw him in the defendant lobby. And Junie, he said that he was glad to get the lotus root you, you, yeah, the lotus root you gave him, too. Sorry, guys. Wow. It was? My grandma says lotus root is good for your eyes. She says they can even help you see into the future. They can? Then that's the perfect present for a lawyer. And if that's true, I guess you must not have eaten them. <laughs> A sweet, meek girl like this, blowing a courtroom to bits. I must say it's very hard to believe. Objection! Oh, hello. Now, now, your honor, don't let her seemingly innocent appearance fool you. I forgot to silence my phone, I'm sorry. Also, I'm starting to think that my voice that I have for pain is not accurate to this particular pain. So, based on that, based on that shout of objection. The defendant has a motive for committing this crime. But, but that's not true. I don't have any kind of motive. And, and I don't even know the lady who was killed. Are her braids like pine cones? I admit the investigation didn't turn up any connection between the victim and the defendant. However, that doesn't matter. The only thing that does that does is that her objective was to the destruction of courtroom number four itself. Wow, that was a lot of conversation that just happened. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Why in the world would Miss Woods want to do that? Mm-hmm, that's a very good question, coming from a novice such as yourself. But first, a question for the defendant. Have you ever been brought up on false charges? What? Why, yes. Yes, I have. And did that experience cause you to harbor a grudge against the court system? Objection! Now, wait just a minute! If that kind of thing was motive for blowing things up, then every one of our clients would turn into bombers. You'll notice that widget uh, adjusts its color and its look based on uh, her emotions, too. So it's like it's very much showy. She wears her emotions on her sleeve anyway, but Widget is really making it clear. <laughs> That's a valid point. We wouldn't have a single courthouse you left standing in the land. I can see the accused isn't the only one who might bear resentment against the courts. But Miss Woods is the only person who could have committed the crime. Why? Because we have found some decisive evidence that proves the defendant's guilt. Decisive, huh? I'll believe it when I see it. They always say they have decisive evidence. It involves a very unique aspect of the bomb itself, Your Honor. And what exactly was so unique about it? Hmm. Why don't we have Miss Sykes answer that question? Uh, me? Mm-hmm. I notice that you appear to be very nervous, and well, gentlemen that I am, I'd like, you to, I'd like to offer you the chance to gain some confidence with such an easy question. Could he be any more condescending? Really, what a thoroughly unpleasant man. L is for loser. <laughs> what did you say? N nothing. Not a single thing. I love all of the different thinking animations and like 
desk pounding animations and things that um, that all these different characters have. So Athena has some, or the, I guess the people that animated Athena had some fun with with hers. I like how she plays with her earring. <clears throat> now let's see, what was I supposed to do at the time like this? Oh, I know, the court record. Blah 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 tutorial stuff. The information I need is in the court record. All right, Miss Eggs, let's hear your answer. What was unique about the bomb? It was in a stuffed animal. In the judge's pocket. In Apollo's briefcase. <laughs> Mr. Payne, what kind of simpleton do you take me for? It was stuffed inside a stuffed animal. It's evil intentions covered up by a cute exterior. I don't know, that's a pretty devilish elephant. Eh, very good. Have a cookie. The bomb that went off in the courtroom was indeed hidden inside a stuffed animal. There, how do you like that? Not bad, huh? I am fine. Just like I said from the start, I can do this. It, yes, as I recall, the bomb was stuffed inside a stuffed animal the whole time. I never even got to take a look at it. But what connection does this simpish elephant have to do with the defendant? And also, how is... Why... If the bomb exploded inside of the elephant, why is the elephant still in one piece? I have... I have issues. Unless it was, like, taken out and was like, Ha-ha! Bomb! But then we'd know who... Who did it. I don't... I don't understand. Also, wasn't it submitted as evidence? Oh, was the elephant submitted as ele as elephants? <laughs> the elephant was submitted as elephants. <laughs> oh gosh, maybe that's why it's an elephant because it was evidence and it's a tongue twister. I am wasting time. Mm -mm, what connection does this impish elephant have with the defendant? The answer to that question lies in another piece of evidence, which I have here. Oh, it's a tail. Oh, what pretty tail is this? It appears to be a little singed. Oh, it's what remains of the elephant. It's a tale, Your Honor, the tale of a poor victim of the explosion. This is incredible. Are you saying it's Detective Farm's tale? <laughs> no. Your Honor is so very close, but no. It belongs to the stuffed animal. It's called the Phony Fanty. A rather unpleasant name, if you ask me. He's the mascot for a campaign to eliminate false evidence and false charges, is he not? Oh, yes, the dark age of the law. Exactly. His mo motto is phony evidence is just chunked up. Okay. That's so wrong on so many levels. The phony fanty's tail is made of vinyl cloth. And we found something very interesting on the surface. The defendant's fingerprints. What? The phony fanty prov provided the prosecution with the evidence we needed. It clearly proves the accused handled the bomb. <laughs> They're either supposed to be pine cones or like a bee's nest or something. She's very because of the whole nature vibe. But that doesn't make any sense. Why would Jeannie's fingerprints be on that? It doesn't appear to be refutable evidence. The court accepts it's, it's into evidence. Piece of the stuffed animal that the bomb was inserted into the defense fingerprints from. Miss Woods, do you have an explanation for this? Uh, I don't understand. Uh, how about you, Miss Sykes? Do you have any plausible explanation to refute this decisive piece of evidence? Well, uh, uh... I can't do it. I can't think of a single thing. But I better come up with something, for Junie's sake. If you can't produce an answer, we could always go straight to the ruling, if you prefer. No, I have to say something fast. Oh no, I can't get my voice to work. Why now of all times? I thought I overcame this already. Maybe I'm still not ready to stand in court.
As you can see, there is no room for debate. Objection! Why, it's you! Yay! <laughs> also, uh, she has a lot going on um, that this game is going to explore. So that was a nice little sneak preview into the past uh, that she is going to be overcoming in this uh, in this story. Is overcoming the right word? She has a lot of trauma. There's a lot. There's a lot there. <clears throat> Sorry it took me so long to get here, Athena. Apollo explained the whole thing to me over the phone. He asked me to come help you out in his place. Thanks for coming. I hate to admit it, but I was having a real rough time on my own. Oh, I don't know. I think you were doing just fine, all things considered. And you hung in there, giving me enough time to get here. Now let's turn things around. Yeah, holding down the fort. You got it, boss! So she still hasn't quite stood a trial by herself, but, uh, here we go. <laughs> Look who showed up out of the blue. If it isn't Mr. Phoenix Wright, you always manage to surprise me. 3 deified Phoenix. <laughs> Your Honor, Mr. Payne has called for an early rule. But I believe there are still many things that need to be deliberated. How did Miss Wood's fingerprints wind up on the stuffed animal tail? How was the bomb ever even detonated? Until these questions are answered, I assert that it's impossible for a fair ruling to be made. Are absolutely right. Let us continue from where we left off. I assume you have no objections, Mr. Payne. <laughs> None at all, Your Honor. I guess his voice wasn't quite as crazy as I'm letting on, but it was still kind of close. <laughs> wow. Juniper started to sound like Phoenix's first case. This witch really looks like she's having a hard time. Junie's really struggling, Mr. Wright. I get the sense she's afraid of the courtroom itself. Because of yesterday? Yeah, it was understandably very traumatic for her. Poor thing, and here she is back at the courthouse again, being so brave. I'd like to make a request, Your Honor. If at all possible, I'd like to have Miss Woods rest in the lobby. condition. <clears throat> very well. I grant special permission. You get some rest, Junie. And leave the rest to us. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about this. Phoenix Wright. I've been looking forward to meeting you. It's been a while, Mr. Payne. Heh. <laughs> You're more clueless than I'd heard. I do believe you mean. How do you do? For I am Gaspin Payne. I am the younger brother of your long-standing rival, Winston Payne. Long-standing rival? That's a stretch. What? <laughs> Thank you. When were we ever rivals, let alone long-standing? I love this game because it has the same thoughts that I do. You see, Mr. Wright, I will cleanse Winston of the disgrace he met with your- with- wow. He met with at your hands. I can read the text. <sighs> Looks like this royal pain is going to be as thoroughly unpleasant as the other. <laughs> Your Honor. The prosecution would now like to call a decisive witness to the stand. This witness will testify as to how the accused detonated the bomb in the courtroom. Very well. Please call your witness, Mr. Payne. Bring it on. Oh, hello. Witness your name and occupation, please. Witness. Is the machine saying that? I guess, because it's yellow. Huh. Name, Ted, donate, like, detonate. <laughs> occupation, bomb, disposal specialist. Oh my, what a strange robotic voice you have. Speech synthesis via typing is the same as me talking. He sounds exactly like a robot. Can't you speak in a normal manner? I can. You 
can. But I do not like to speak. Speaking is inefficient. Energy expenditure, speaking, typing, understand. Oh, speaking is greater than typing. Understand. I thought that was a parenthesis again. Don't know why. <clears throat> what an odd witness. Mr. Tonate was in charge of the bomb for that trial and, and was there when it went off. So if you were in charge of the bomb, why are you not suspected? <laughs> and being a squad specialist, do you have any relation to the defendant? Negative. I first met the girl while on this job. Many people are employed by the police. I know only a fraction of them. However, I was shocked when I first discovered the body of the victim. Shocked. I was the first one on the scene after the explosion. I went there to ensure safety, but ended up discovering a dead body. Hmm, so who was the first to discover the body, was he? He is here to testify about the circumstances surrounding the moment of the explosion. I'm making him robotic now. Ugh. Very well. The court will hear Mr. Tonate's testimony. It's been a while since I recorded this, guys. I am out of sorts with the whole voices thing. Yikes. But at the very least, you have the court to inspect and remove that face guard witness. Hello, 3D glasses. Which is funny because this is on 3DS and I could actually make it 3D. Oh, that's weird. I was actually playing with a 3D filter and it actually is moving him around. Okay, sorry. Um, when the bomb went off, alright. <clears throat> the bomb was originally, originally disarmed by me, then transported here as evidence. Bomb name HH3000, operated by timer or with remote. I was watching from the gallery when I suddenly became alarmed. I saw that the bomb's timer was counting down. Okay. So even though the bomb was supposed to be disarmed, it somehow got switched on. Precisely. Activating the timer is very simple. One, connect wires. Two, switch on timer. A monkey could do it. I am sure even you would be able to, Mr. Wright. I guess that makes you the blue monkey in this barrel of fun, boss. <clears throat> I'd now like to begin my cross-examination. Huh? <clears throat> Mr. Tonate, what is that? HH3000, aka a bomb. A bomb? <laughs> Great googly moogly. Ah! Mr. Tonate, I, I demand that you disarm this instant. Disassembly complete. I had to remember what his voice was. 5.3 seconds. 0.2 seconds short of my personal best. Are you trying to give me a heart attack? I'm not exactly a spring chicken, you know. This is an exact replica of the HH-3000. It is used to practice disarming bombs. Disarm equals success. Explosion equals failure. An exact replica of the bomb that exploded, is it? So that's what it looks like. I submitted a photograph of the real bomb just taken just before the trial. Okay, this picture is going to be very important. Dimensions 10 by 10 by 10. Weight 12 pounds. Perfect replication. The bomb does appear to have a very good copy indeed. Yes, however, I could not replace the detonation mechanism. It has a very puzzling wiring setup. It is refrigerated. Wow. Regrettable, I could not replicate it. All these capital letters, man. Yikes. <clears throat> Witness this enough. There is no need to replicate anything here. Okay, hand size to panel can be done now. And now for the defense will begin their cost of mm -hmm. Okay, so now I can see it. So what's with the unzipped torso? I guess that's it, it came out of there. Where's Mr. S Miss Sykes gone to? Athena, you can come out now. Okay, Mr. Wright, let's get to work. I guess you were pretty scared, huh? What? I don't know what you're talking about. She was about to bolt. Hey, put a sock in it, Widget. Transparent as ever. Now let's see, where we were we? We were at the cross examination. Oh, cross examination, of course. She seems disoriented. I wonder if she's alright. You 
Maybe I should ask Athena if she remembers how to cross-examine to help her focus. <laughs> nah, she'll be fine. <laughs> that, that makes me sound so mean. Like, ah, she's fine. Forget about it. I feel, I feel bad. You know what? I'm gonna ask. It's been a while, anyway. Athena, you remember how to conduct a cross-examination, right? What? Of course I do! What kind of lawyer would I be if I didn't? Now, now, don't get upset. But what do you say to humoring me with a little review? Okay, well now it just sounds like I'm patronizing her, so... That's fine. Examine the witness testimony and compare it against the court record. Bring your witness testimony. Advance. Okay. Cool. She's ready for it. Mm-hmm. 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 And with nothing in place, blah, blah, blah. Press, press everything. You know, that's our thing. Looks like you remember it just as I taught it. And that was a nice refresher course for me. <laughs> I mean, he has been out of the courtroom for quite some time. If you can't find any contradictions, you flub it up too often, don't be afraid to ask me for help. Oh, that's new. I'll let you know where I think the suspicious statement is. Ah. I'll be counting on you if I get in a bind. All right, it's cross-examination time. Well, that's a new one. I wonder if that lasts throughout the entire game. Or if it's just for this tutorial case. That would be an interesting... I guess we'll find out. Uh, press everything. Hold it! By the way, um, I think I mentioned this in the first few games because I heard that Sam Regal was the voice of Phoenix Wright. But this is when he starts being the voice of Phoenix Wright. You can hear it if you know his voice. Uh, you say that you disarmed the bomb, but are you really sure it was disarmed? Absolutely. I can disarm anything. In a flash. Uh, that looks more like dismantle than disarm to me. Oh. Pardon me. Let's see, is there any chance you could have forgotten to disarm the bomb? Impossible. I do not make rudimentary mistakes like that. They say to air is human. Although the jury is still out on this guy. <laughs> if you must know, Mr. Wright, according to the court's own records, the fact that the bomb had indeed been disarmed was officially confirmed. I guess I can roll out the possibility that he forgot to disarm it. Could you talk about the bomb in a little more detail for the court, Mr. Tony? Certainly. Sure, this sounds important. Timer or a remote? That's interesting. What was the approximate size and weight of the bomb? He already went through that. This information is also written on the photograph. Oh yes, here it is on the back. According to this, the case is made out of alloy plating five sixteenths of an inch thick. It certainly sounds like one thick and very heavy bit of metal. I bet if I dropped that thing on your foot, you'd be hopping. If you drop that thing anywhere, I'd be hopping for the nearest exit. Very well, I believe the court has heard enough about the bomb itself. So, Mr. Tony, you're keeping an eye on the bomb. Where were you watching from? From the gallery, of course. Hold it! Why were you in the gallery? My duties may have been over for the moment, but I wanted to keep watch. Even though the bomb was disarmed, you can never be too careful. Explosive devices are very dangerous things. Oh, how admirably responsible of you. A model to be emulated. I practice disarming bombs every day. I practice assembling them, too. The disarming part again. The assembling them. Well, I'll have you know that I practice presenting evidence every day myself. But do you ever practice having evidence presented to you? Presented to me? What? No, I... Then you cannot very well call yourself a professional yet, can you? Ah, that does it! I'm gonna start practicing having evidence presented to me every day. And you better drink some coffee, boss. We're gonna be pulling an all-nighter. Uh, I don't think that'll be necessary. Or worth either of our time. So, Mr. Tonate, do you, what did you witness from the gallery? Hold it! 
You saw it counting down clearly with your own eyes? I hardly think a timer as small as the one on the bomb could be seen from the gallery. These goggles help me see very small things clearly from very far away. I can even see what you had for breakfast by looking at your tie. Why do I suddenly feel like a bug under a magnifying glass? Hmm. -mm. I guess it's possible you saw the timer if he was wearing those goggles. I'm not so sure. There's something that just doesn't sit right with me. Hmm? I don't think I follow. The bomb was completely hidden inside the stuffed animal. So well concealed, in fact, that it didn't even look like a bomb at all. So you're trying to find testimony that conflicts with the evidence, right? That's right. Listening carefully to Mr. Tenney's testimony is just the first step. After that, it's a matter of taking a look at any evidence that seems relevant. Remember that you can touch present. Blah, blah, blah. What state was in at the time would be... Hey, I have this nifty thing, so whenever I skip stuff like that. This testimony was about when the bomb went, so the state is important. Okay, so it's guiding me through. It didn't look like a bomb because it was inside the stuffed animal, so how did it count how did you see a countdown? I gotcha. I'm following. I'm following game. Thank you for guiding me with your logic. Because I still don't understand how the bomb did not destroy the Oh, wait, well, no, it did, because the tail was all that was left. <clears throat> so you say you saw the bomb's countdown, is that right? Of course. I clearly saw it counting down to zero. And I say that you are clearly lying. What are you talking about? There's no way you could have seen the bomb's timer. After all, the bomb was concealed inside a stuffed animal. Mr. Tonate, how can you claim to know the bomb was about to go off? When you couldn't even see the timer. Ah, uh, that... <laughs> no! That doesn't seem like a glaring inconsistency, indeed. Or that does seem like a glaring... <laughs> Sorry, I thought that the judge was just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Witness, how do you explain this? <clears throat> well, I... I... Oh, that was great, Mr. Wright! You found a contradiction right off the bat! Always remember, Athena. When you find an inconsistency in a witness's testimony, there's always a reason behind it. It could be a lie, a hidden meaning, a secret. Whatever it is, it's up to us to dig it out. And pointing out every contradiction we find is the best way to do it, right, boss? Now the question is, what can we dig out of Mr. Tonate? Well, let me see. I, uh... Did you really type the word, uh? No, 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 there must be some mistake. Oh yes, yes of course. I remember now. The sound. I knew because of the sound. <coughs> sound? What sound? When the timer of this type of bomb is switched on, it beeps softly. Beep, beep, beep. It is the sound of the bomb counting down. Uh, a beeping noise, you say. I suppose it would be possible to notice that even with the bomb inside the stuffed animal. I simply made a mistake. My bad. Objection! You were way up in the gallery, man. How in the world did you hear such a tiny little sound all the way up in the gallery? Exactly. All the way from the gallery. Listening for the sound of a bomb's timer is an integral part of my work. I constantly undergo training so that I will never miss it. You and your training. I hardly think training would help you hear something so soft from so far away. What now? Are you making light of the fine science of disarming bombs? It is a solemn mission that I put my life on the line to perform. What kind of specialist would I be if I could not hear a bomb's timer? It is not like dissembling a toaster, you know. Now he's just showing off. You keep asserting that the sound was too tiny to hear, but the only tiny thing here is your skill as a lawyer. Being suspicious is not an attractive quality, you know. And you're just overflowing with attractive qualities, are you? Or perhaps you have some truth that Mr. Tonate did not hear the sound? Well, no, but... It still seems totally suspect. But it's going to be really hard to prove that he didn't hear something. If I have this correct, the prosecution's argument is that... Someone reactivated the bomb before it was brought into the courtroom. 
What I don't understand, Mr. Payne, is why you believe that person is to be Miss Woods. That's simple, Your Honor. Mr. Mr. Tonate happened to be there when it happened. He was there when the defendant rearmed the bomb. Oh, what's this now? It happened before the trial started. It was when Detective Arm and I were transporting the bomb. We brought the bomb to the lobby for the defense. Bomb equal evidence. The lawyer wanted to see it before the start of the trial. Looking for a chance. Oh, looking for a chance to get the bomb. Miss Woods was already there in that lobby. Her goal was surely to rearm the bomb and steal the remote switch. The remote switch. Yes, the switch that controls the bomb remotely. Duh. It has been missing ever since the incident. Okay, so is to my point, why did why did it need the timer if the remote was there? Like if it could just go boom. Switch that starts the time bombs. Oh, it starts the time bombs. Okay, well, if I read the evidence, I would have my answer. Stolen just for the last announcement. I am partially to blame. I left the bomb in remote on top of the transport case, and they were rearmed and stolen while I was talking to the lawyer. The defendant then used the remote to, from inside the courtroom to start the timer. Objection! How long is the timer? How can you assert so unequivocally that the bomb was rearmed re in the lobby? Objection! The bomb was safely secured in the transport case. The only time it was outside the case was in the lobby. Therefore, that was the one and only opportunity anyone had to meddle with it. Someone other than Mr. Tonate could have opened the case and taken the bomb out. Impossible. The transport case is assigned exclusively to me. Do you see this number here? That is my identification number. And I have the only key that can open the case. Okay, Tonate and Detective Arm transported the bomb, and Tonate has the key. <coughs> Nevertheless, Mr. Payne's assertion is nothing more than conjecture. Hmm. You have no proof it was Miss Woods who stole the remote switch. And by the same token, you have no proof that it wasn't her. But what I do have is a piece of evidence that proves the defendant handled the bomb. Ugh, that tail. Five minutes, 24 seconds, 2.3 deciseconds. The defense's advantage lasted a mere five minutes. Talk about a rotten hand. As long as they have her fingerprints as their trump card, I'm at a big disadvantage. Still the poker, the poker player over here. <clears throat> it appears we will have to hear from the defendant herself once more. I wholeheartedly agree, Your Honor. I would like to recall Miss Woods to the stand. I trust you have no objections, Mr. Wright. I'm worried about her addition, but we do need her testimony. On the other hand, I'm not sure I want to make Athena mad. I can read your feelings, you know, boss. Guess there's no hiding from her, huh? That's part of her gimmick. Don't worry, I know we need her testimony. But if anybody picks on her again, they'll pay. She's already anger level one. Don't worry, I'll stop the proceedings before I let anything bad happen to her. The defense has no objections, Your Honor. In that case, I will take my leave. But before I do, there is just one more thing. Mr. Wright, is it? Me? Yeah. Dismantling bombs is my job. Dismantling the case is yours. Do you think you can handle it? I look forward to seeing you try. <sighs> this guy is hiding something. I just know it. He's smack-talking me! <laughs> now if you will excuse me. Bailiff, please go to the lobby and bring back the defendant. Oh, this poor girl. Junie! Hi, Athena. She looks even worse off than before. Don't worry, Junie. We're here for you. Thanks, Athena. And I'll do my best, too. You blew up the courtroom because you bear resentment against the courts, correct? 
But no, of course not. I... What's that you say? I can barely hear you. Stop bullying my client! Uh, I haven't done anything wrong. This prosecutor's scary. Objection! What an impudent little girl. Stop acting innocent and tell the truth. This is getting ugly. Say something, Phoenix! You rearmed the bomb because you wanted to blow up the courthouse. Admit it. Objection badgering the witness. Phoenix, say something. <laughs> or Athena. That's why you went to the lobby where Mr. Justice was. Isn't that right? Ah! Mr. Wright, can I go give the prosecutor a smack? W what? Of course not. Do we have to review courtroom manners 101 again? We can't let it creep that bullies innocent girls like this off- uh, This- Wow. Like this off so easily. I haven't forgotten about how he treated you. Don't worry about me. Just help Junie. Her heart's crying out. She's so scared. So very scared. Looks like Athena's picking up something with her heightened senses of hearing. And it sounds like this time, it's the voice of Miss Wood's heart. Don't deny it. You stole the remote switch and used it in the courtroom, didn't you? Your Honor, please put a stop to this. Mr. Payne is badgering the defendant. Yes, Miss Woods does seem quite frightened. Mr. Payne, I ask that you behave more like a gentleman. No, oh, but don't you know, Your Honor? There is no more gentle man in this world than I. Ah, oh, as if a gentleman or even a gentle man would behave like he does. Don't let that rude ruffian win. How dare you call a great gentleman such as I a rude ruffian? I'll have you know I attend a manners class every Saturday. I'm more than just a mere gentleman. I am a genteel man. Not when you're terrorizing a young lady, you're not. I demand my money back from that manners class if I were you. I should probably be the adult here and stop the two of them, but... It's too entertaining. <laughs> Mr. Payne, that'll be enough. Certainly, Your Honor. No further questions. Let's move on to the defense testimony. Miss Woods, please share with the court what you were doing when the bomb went off. I like the zoom in that they give. It's pretty cool. Also, I'm really getting vibes of, like... Like the re well, she was, she was taken aback whenever he kept asking about like why she was in the room and why, um, or sh why she was in the lobby. But oh, she was also taken aback. Um, oh, it was when Athena said, or no, she said, Junie said that she had gotten to know uh, Apollo through Athena and wanted to show her support in the courtroom. I think she might have a crush, is basically what I'm coming down to. <laughs> All of that to say. Well, that day, I was watching from the gallery. The bomb went off. And rubble started falling. It fell on top of me. Jeannie's clearly in pain being forced to recall the bombing like this. She can't even get her words out. This isn't going to work, so what now? Hey, wait a minute. Even if she can't vocalize what she wants to say, we can listen to what's inside her heart. Yes, now's the perfect time to use Athena's power. You can hear it, can't you, Athena? The cries of Miss Wood's heart. Yes, and they sound incredibly strained. She's so scared. I think she could collapse at any second. Athena has a unique ability, you see. With her finely tuned sense of hearing, she can hear the words of a witness's heart. In essence, she can sense how a person is really feeling from the tone of their voice. This is all up to Athena and her special ability now. Athena, I want you to use the analytical psychology you studied. And listen to the testimony of Miss Wood's heart. Okay, boss. I'll give it a go. After all, this is the whole reason I put all that effort into studying analytical psychology. Alf Gates, let's do this! 
Gates means let's go in German. So your holographic thingamabob can show us how Miss Woods is feeling, right? In a nutshell, yes. The emotions and images that I picked up on now, just now while listening to her testimony. I can enter all that into Widget and use the mood matrix to analyze them. She draws a smiley face. I always liked that. To activate the thing. These mood markers reflect fluctuations in Jeannie's emotions. When she feels happy, or is enjoying the memory, the happy marker will write, light up. When she feels angry, or frustrated, the angry marker will react. When she feels sadness, or is frightened by a memory, the sad marker will blink. And when she feels surprised or confused, the surprise marker will let us know. So with your special ability in Widget's Mood Matrix program, we can track how Miss Woods is feeling as she testifies. Talk about the wonders of technology. Yep, now let's give it a shot. I'm picking up on some kind of discord or noise in Jeannie's heart. See here? This is what the noise looks like in the Mood Matrix. It's a result of inconsistencies between her testimony and her feelings. If we can pinpoint these inconsistencies, the noise level should drop. Okay, it's time to listen to Miss Wood's true testimony. I like how this also shows, like, what she's seeing in her mind, too. Okay, now that's odd. I think I have a good grasp on Jeannie's emotional state now. This power, this power of Venus is incredible. And I'm seeing an unexpected emotion that's inconsistent with the content of her testimony. What, already? Yep. Look at this! When she says it fell on top of me, the happy marker is reacting. Oh my goodness, did Apollo save her? Is that why she has a little crush? Because she wasn't crushed? Ba bum ching Well, look at that. That is odd. Sorry, I'm totally being distracted from the actual conversation that's happening here. There must be a reason for this contradictory emotion. We just need to do some digging. When you find an unexpected emotion, Touch the pinpoint. And then select the unexpected emotion or reaction from the four mood markers. Got it! Got it! That's a new one. That's fine. Widget is registering joy when Miss Woods recalls the rubble falling on her. There must be a reason for this unexpected emotion. Miss Woods, as the rubble was falling, was there also something that made you feel happy? What? Mr. Wright, the feeling of happiness is spreading throughout Junie's heart. Keep going on this point, and I bet Junie will start to calm down. Great, let's hear what she has to say. Um, just as I was about to escape the courtroom, the bomb went off. I was so startled. I tripped. And then rubble started falling on top of me. I really thought I was done for. But just then- Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> Apollo came and rescued me. <laughs> yes. Apollo? That is the fastest knitting I have ever seen in my life. He used his own body to shield me from the rubble. So that's when he sustained those injuries. How do you feel, Jeannie? Did talking about Apollo give you some courage? Yes, Apollo is just like the sun. Strong and bright and warm. Just talking about him makes me feel like a leaf undergoing photosynthesis. And see, your coughing stopped all of a sudden. Oh, you're right. Thank you, Thena. A little bit of psychology. Or, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of therapy. It's like courtroom therapy, basically. It's just, just a little therapy session in between the, uh, the cases as we talk to witnesses. Looks like we were able to- oh, looks like we were able to draw out some new testimony. 
<laughs> Pretty neat, huh? But there's still some noise left, meaning there must be still be some discord in Genie's heart. Hmm. I guess we'll have to keep going then. Let me input this new information and update the mood matrix, and we'd be good to go. We'll be good to go. I'm so sorry. I messed up so many times in this recording. I am getting back into it, I guess. <laughs> you remember what to do, right? It's been so long. When I find an unexpected emotion, so you press pinpoint. And then select the unexpected emotion from the mood markers. If we can find the reason for the discord in her heart, then we should be able to draw even more new testimony out. Cool. What do you got? I tried to run, but I was too slow. Before I could get away, the bomb went off. I was so startled, I tripped, then the rubble started falling on me. I thought I was done for. But then Apollo came and rescued me. Okay, there's a little bit of sadness, but she might just be worried for his sake. Or maybe not, because apparently this is it. So... You were happy when Mr. Justice rescued you, weren't you? Yes. I was really happy. <laughs> Why is she going so fast with that? Oh my goodness. But there was also something you felt sad about at the same time. Sad? The reason I ask is... When you were describing how you were rescued, we sensed a little sadness, too. Oh! I think it's probably because of Bum Rap Riney. I'm sorry? Bum Rap Riney? Well, what do you know? Something's new. Something new. Wow. That's right, I. I probably used my stuffed animal, Bum Rap Riney, to watch a trial with me. Bum Rap Riney and Phony Fancy are brothers. Who knew that the legal world could inspire a whole line of merchandise? I had Bumrap Riney with me while I was watching the trial. I guess this isn't taking the place of the Badgers. Rest in peace, Badgers. You didn't last very long, did you? But it wasn't until Apollo saved me that I realized I'd lost him as I was running away. My poor Riney, victim of that terrible bomb. Oh, I know. You can see what he looks like in this poster. Oh, look who also has a tail. I think things are starting to come together. It's for a campaign to eradicate fake evidence and fake tar charges. Phony Fancy- oh, Phony Fancy and Bum Rap Riney, huh? Nothing against the campaign, but why an elephant and a rhinoceros? Mr. Wright! I don't sense any discord in Judy's heart anymore. So I guess that means we managed to draw out all her testimony. That's right! I'll just make an update with the new info. And we'll have the whole picture. So, do you think her new testimony will help? Absolutely. I don't know what I would have done without you, Athena. So, Bum Rap Riney was in that courtroom when the bomb went off. Now that we know that, it changes the meaning of the other piece of evidence. All I have to do is present it. At the right statement. Gotta love Apollo. Objection! Ms. Woods, I know this trial has been very hard for you, but you can relax now. You are without a doubt innocent. M Mr. Wright, what wild, wild uh, well, what wild assertion are you making now? My wild assertion is simply this: the two stuffed animals were mixed up. The tail the defendant's fingerprints were found on wasn't that of Phony Fanti. It was the tale of her gallery companion, Bum Rap Riney. Objection! What? What nonsense is that? I can see they both. I can see they're both stuffed animals. Wow, I'm so sorry, you guys. Yes, but they're completely different characters. An elephant and a rhino. They're all. They're as distinct as a defense lawyer and a prosecutor. But are they really so different? Both defense lawyers and prosecutors strive to protect the peace through law. Even elephants and rhinos have some similar characteristics. 
they're both gray, and for example. Well, not these particular ones. Anyway, this poster is all I need to prove my assertion to be true. If I may direct the court's attention here, you'll clearly see how the two got mixed up. To the tail. Wow, this is weird to do this with a touch screen. And could I do it with the. Oh, yeah, I could have touched on that. It was just weird to, like, not have the camera here and to have this grid. Take that! Look at the tail! Uh, would you look at that? The two tails are exactly the same. Yes, exactly. The two stuffed animals are based on entirely different animals. But the design of their tails is exactly the same. Ah! <laughs> Your hair, man. Your hair. Order, order, the court. As long as the possibility exists that the tail belongs to Bob Rap Rappy. We can no longer consider it to be decisive proof that the defendant handled the ball. As things stand, I consider the charges against the accused unsubstantiated. Yay! Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Payne? Oh, uh, yes, of course, Your Honor. Oh, I thought that was great. Er, oh, that was great, Mr. Wright. You turned things right around. It is called Turnabout. Yeah, it's not over yet, but at least we managed to get to hold out this long. I believe that brings our proceedings for today to a close. Mr. Payne, I'm afraid you have some serious investigating ahead of you. Yes, Your Honor. Very well. Let us reconvene tomorrow. Court is adjourned. Wow, it's actually a daily th a day by day thing? Nice. That's never happened before. It's always been like part one and two on the same day. But I doubt I'm going to be examining anything. It's not time for that yet. That was so exciting, boss! We did it! True to form, you managed to just barely pull it off in the very last moment. Oh boy. True to form? Gee, I never knew you had such a glowing opinion of me. Thank you for everything you're doing. You did great, Miss Woods. You really stuck it out. And you got really brave at the end, just when we needed you most, Juni. Thanks to you, we were able to turn things around. Well, you were the one who gave me that courage, Lena. Really? <laughs> Thanks. So, be honest. Was I any help at all? Of course. Without you, we would have never gotten out of that tight spot. That's good to hear. I may still have a lot to learn, but you can bet I'm going to give it my all. I, for some reason, I cannot say all whenever I'm saying give it my all. Give it my all. <laughs> Not my awe. <laughs> It'll be so, I'll be so good that one day you'll call me your partner. That's what I like to hear. Analytical psychology. The ability to solve the riddles of a person's heart. Athena's true potential is beginning to really shine through now. Hey, where's Apollo, anyway? Hmm. Good question. I almost forgot about him. <laughs> Phoenix! <laughs> I assumed he'd still be here in the lobby. Oh, I know. Maybe he's still in courtroom number four. Courtroom number four? What would he be doing at the scene of the explosion? When I came out to the lobby to rest, I told Apollo about Von Raff Reini. I told him I dropped Reini in the courtroom as I was trying to escape before the blast. And then... Apollo said he had an idea where Reini might be, so we went to take a look together. Huh. I guess Apollo can be pretty nice when he wants to be. I re I'm really feeling they have like a very sibling relationship, <laughs> Athena and Apollo. So you went looking for Reini together before you were called back into courtroom number five? Yes. I had some time to rest, so I was able to go and look for him. But then they called me into the courtroom to testify. Apollo insisted on staying there, though. With all those injuries, I wonder how he's managing. I think Apollo might have figured something out. Hmm. I wonder what it was. We better go check on him. He told me I'm going to look for evidence to clear your name, Jeannie. Juniper. Right, he wouldn't bother Jeannie. That's the famous thing. Just maybe he found some new piece of evidence. Are we going to investigate? On the first trial? Anyway, we'd better go and get him. Good idea. 
if for nothing else than to like make sure he's doing okay because yikes he was passing out earlier it was it was bad Dear, was he attacked? Why was he attacked? Oh man! So I've only played through this game once. I should say that um, there are a few cases of each of these. Actually, yeah, there are, there's like one case of each of these games that I've played more than once, which I think is only twice. But um, I, of course, as always, know all the. Um, the punchline, so to speak, the whole like overarching story of the game and what happens. But there are some little bits and pieces that I'm like, that I clearly don't remember. Like this one, where Apollo was attacked, apparently. And, uh, oh no. Um, I have, I have no words. Welcome back, guys! Uh, it has been a while and I am so happy to be back playing these games. I love these characters, I love these games, and I love that they have, like, my same humor uh, and thoughts. Uh, I think that's why I love the game so much, because of the quirky characters and the humor. Um, this, uh, these games have been a little bit, uh, I want to say easier than the past games. I don't, I don't know whether it's so much easier as it is uh, convenient. Like, there are more convenient things uh, that they give you in this uh whenever we get to the investigation you'll see what i mean there's like little check boxes to let you know oh you've already looked at this so i don't have to like double check things um or like if i think that i'm clicking on something else but it's actually something that i've already seen um so yeah just like oh what do they call it uh darn something of life <laughs> i'm gonna have to look it up before my next case uh, quality of life. There it is. Quality of life changes in these games. Um, so, yeah. Also, I do like the animated cutscenes and hearing their voices uh, because that's fun, too. They are very anime, though. <laughs> um, not that that's a bad thing, uh, but it's just like, okay. <laughs> uh, it's a little goofy. It's a little fun. But, I mean, these games are. They are goofy and they're fun, even though they are dealing with really serious topics like murder and bombing of courthouses. It's serious stuff it gets, it gets pretty intense it's it started pretty intense it doesn't get pretty intense it's already intense um but yeah just just you wait uh as this as this game continues and uh the trials go on um yeah i i i'm just so excited to be doing this and i don't really have much more to say about this um this is a good uh kind of introductory case for athena's powers um I appreciate that I was able to do it in the first part. I actually didn't expect to do it in the first part. I thought that they were going to be like, okay, this is, you know, how you play an Ace Attorney game. And then second part, this is how you use her power. But I think it's going to be more like, okay, this is how you play this Ace Attorney game, including Athena's power. Second part, okay, let's actually be real and serious now. I'm not holding your hand anymore. So second, uh, second episode, or not episode, second part of this episode will be uh, more of that, I guess. Less, uh, less hand-holding. But still a tutorial, because that's what it is. Um, I'm rambling. I do that whenever I'm excited. Let's just, you know, let's just close out and stay tuned for next time. Subscribe if you have not done that whenever I was doing my other games. Uh, because we're back at it, guys. And we're going to be playing all the way through until the end of spirit of justice so we've got a lot of cases ahead of us a lot of parts ahead of us and i'll talk to you guys next time <laughs>